Africa Inland Church, Milimani, Nairobi. We are a biblically mature community of believers worshipping and serving Christ. We exist to glorify God by connecting people to Christ and His family, helping them to discover their life mission and positively impact our world. Guided by five biblical pillars, namely worship, ministry, evangelism, fellowship and discipleship, we are dedicated to honor God in worship, sharing the good news of Christ, intentional discipleship and sound biblical teaching as well as excellence in our service to God and humanity. Led by the Rev. Dr. Stephen Myrory, we have a team of seasoned and dedicated ministers Rev. Matthew Okeo, Rev. Sylvester Kirwa, Pastor Rachel Kisula, Rev. Luke Odiambo, Rev. Stephen Munyambu, and Rev. Hosea Mite. We are anchored on the rock of ages and geared to the times to minister the love of Christ to a hearting global community. We are AIC Milimani Nairobi. We are dedicated to reach you online, on radio, and on TV. Welcome to this online broadcast. The King bless you. Bless you. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made, we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. And indeed, this is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. The 11th of July, Saturday, I want to greet you. Ladies, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, praise the Lord. And welcome to our fellowship this very special day that the Lord ordained before we knew it. I know we have missed our June convention. We have missed many ladies' fellowships. But the Lord has allowed us today to fellowship, to be at his feet, to sing, to worship. And we thank him so much. So I want to welcome you today to our ladies' fellowship, AIC Milimani. We thank God that we can come to you. And this is AIC Milimani, Nairobi. My name is your pastor. Pastor Rachel Kisula. I would like us to bow down for a word of prayer before we proceed. Our Heavenly Father, what a blessing, what a joy to be called your children. This afternoon we bow before you in adoration. We humble ourselves at your feet. We worship you. We adore you, we magnify you, we lift your name, the name that is high above all names. What a privilege that we can come and fellowship. We thank you for allowing us to meet at our ladies today, to worship, to sit at your feet, to hear your word, and just have the warmth of your presence. And Lord, we want to invite you now that even as we, we begin this program, you will go ahead of us, you will speak to us, we will experience you in a mighty way. We will experience the flow of your spirit, Lord. So we invite you now, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, have we made this prayer. Amen and amen. And now I want to invite our own ladies worship team to come and lead us in songs of worship. Ladies at home, Songesha, Viti, Kidogo, prepare. Please stand and dance and join together as we worship the Lord. Welcome. Welcome, Ladies Fellowship Worship Team. Karibu. Hi, ladies, wherever you are, we invite you to join us even as we start our worship this afternoon. We just want to tell God that he is worthy of our praise. 
is worthy of our honor and we want to confess this afternoon that indeed hakuna mwingine kama yeye there is none that compares to him Bye. 
never fails. Whatever he says comes to pass. And that is why we, we are here today to celebrate the doing of the Lord. So all the ladies in the house, Bwana Asifiwe, we are going to praise the Lord. So why don't you, you know, take your small girls and let them join us so that we can, we can praise together. Huku na huku kama mawimbi upendo wa Yesu na tuzunguka. Hallelujah. If you believe so, can you just dance for Jesus?
afternoon, Lord, we bow before your throne. We come with open hearts that you may pour, that you may pour your rain on us. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain you, Lord. Indeed, we are thirsty for you. We are in a dry and weary land. Lord, we need you. Come and quench this dust inside of us, O oh Lord. We are searching and we are seeking, O oh Lord, but it is only in you. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let
name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. That was very powerful worship. We are indeed in the presence of the Lord. And in that mood, we want to go before the Lord in prayer, interceding for ourselves, interceding for our family. So ladies, I want to invite you again, wherever you are, to, to just pour your heart before the Lord, to go before him in prayer as I lead. So, so let's pray together. Our Lord and Father, we thank you because you are our God. We thank you because you have loved us with an everlasting love. And we thank you for calling us ladies in the positions you've given us in our families, in our places of work, in our churches, in this society. And we want to come before you this afternoon, even as we recognize that you're a mighty and powerful God. We know that we are sinners. We do not even deserve to be in your presence. And so this afternoon, Lord, we come with repentant hearts. We pray that you can forgive us because we have sinned against you. We have sinned in the way we have thought. We have sinned in the way we have done our things. We have done sins of commission and omission. But we thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ, which is able to save us and cleanse us. And we, we plead for your mercies, Lord. Forgive us, cleanse us, create in us new hearts. Father, Lord, pick us up again where we have gone wrong and cleanse us. Thank you for accepting us as your children. We can now confidently come to you and say, Abba, Father, we have come with a lot of thanks and gratitude. You have been faithful to us. You have watched over us in these times of COVID-19. You have protected our families. You have provided for us. Even though maybe we have had challenges, thank you because we are still here. Thank you because we have you as our stronghold and you have not left us. You, our rock, the rock of all ages, you have been faithful to us and we thank you for that, oh God. But Father, we come before you this afternoon crying with our needs. You who searches our hearts, you know our deepest prayers. You know our deepest desires. You know our deepest agony and cries, oh God. And we come before you as women this afternoon, crying upon you. The Lord, you can hear us. We are crying unto you for the sake of our families. Lord, it has been a difficult moment for families. We know we have struggled financially. We know as families, some marriages are breaking and we are struggling God as women and we pray that you can hold us together and that your grace and peace can be sufficient upon us. Give us wisdom as women because of the position you've given us in our marriages that we can be sober, that we can be people of faith, that we can be people of patience and tolerance, that we can wait upon you even when we struggle. We want to remember our children. We know that many of them are struggling because they are at home, especially the school going children, especially the candidates because of the disruption of education. Lord, we pray as women that we can be close to them. We can offer them that support and you can only enable us. At some, some time, we are so weak. We feel so helpless with our children. We do not know what to do with them. We pray for wisdom as we nurture them, as we stay with them at home. We pray that you can come through for us. The Lord, you can also listen to us as women. We are crying for many needs in our hearts. Some women have bereaved of their husbands. Some women have bereaved of their children, of their friends, of their sisters, of their parents, Lord. And we are crying. We are mourning. Some of us are even sick. We plead for your healing hand. And we have ailing members and friends and relatives. We pray that your mighty hand of healing will be upon us. But more so, we pray for grace upon us as women. And the Lord, you, you will give us to stay put in you. That we will never give up hope. We will hold on to you even as we struggle. 
I pray that you remember that woman praying right now and reach her at the point of her need. I know they are crying unto you and presenting their needs to you, oh God. I pray that you can remember them and that you can answer. And the Lord, you can give them peace and the Lord, you will come through for them. And I pray that you will even speak to us in this service, Lord, as we listen to your word, that it will speak to us. It will rebuke us. It will correct us. It will heal us, oh God, because we are ailing. I pray that you can use your servant as she speaks to us. And the Lord, you can give us ears to listen and minds and hearts to heed to your word, that we can be not only hearers of your word, but doers, and that then this word will transform us. This word will transform our lives as individuals. This word will transform our families. And the Lord, your name will be lifted because we have prayed, believing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen and amen. We want to thank the Lord for his word. It is our spiritual food, ladies. The word of God keeps us going. I was being reminded now that we, ca we cannot visit each other. We cannot speak to one another. It is only God who is able to speak to us and we can listen to him. And we have the privilege today, ladies, to bring to you our reverend. She has been with us many times. She's a blessing. She's a mother, but she's a servant of God. And I want to introduce to you our speaker today, Reverend Rebecca Twimi Singh. You are very much familiar with her. She is married to Bishop William Twimi Singh. And uh, Bishop was the second bishop of uh, the Deliverance Churches of Kenya. They have together served the Lord in 20, for 22 good years in leadership. And now they serve the Lord in the Deliverance Churches of Kenya. And ladies, the Lord has blessed them with five children, four of whom are married. God has given them 13 children. And believe you me, they have been married for more years than I have lived in this world. 47 years. So even as she comes to speak to us, she is already a mentor in marriage. 47 years. So we thank God for her. She worked with World Vision before and retired. And uh, what is very important is that she is born again. She loves the Lord. And she was saved. Ladies, listen, since she was seven years old, up to date. So children can get saved and stay in the faith. So I want to, to welcome her now to come and speak to us. But I will be reading the Lord's word first. So we are reading from Proverbs. You remember our theme verse, the one we gave you? Chapter 18 and verse 10. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 10. Let's listen to the word of God. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous man runs into it and is safe. I will read again. Proverbs 18.10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous man runs into it and is safe. So welcome so much, our reverend, our mom, to come and speak to us. Karibu. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Praise the Lord, ladies. It's wonderful to have you uh, today on 11th, that you have come for fellowship. It's a wonderful day when women come together. There's a great joy. The presence of the Lord dwells therein. Praise the Lord. Many times when I've gone to the ladies' meetings, the presence of God comes down because they are genuine, they are sincere in their hearts, seeking God. And as I looked at the theme for the ladies in this church for this year, it says divine connections. And uh, I thank God for Rachel. Thank you for the invitation. Sorry about that. And she has written safe. And safe, she has put strong in adversity, faithful to the end. Praise God. That is what we need to be. In these times of adversity, we are strong, we are safe, and we are faithful in the Lord Jesus Christ. So, as we have read, we can read again the theme verse, Proverbs 18, verse 10. 
The Bible says, I read from Amplified. It says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower, the consistently righteous man, upright and right standing with God, runs into it and is safe, high above evil and strong. The name of the Lord is our tower for the righteous, for the women, for the ladies who have given their lives to the Lord. When you have connected with God in times of trouble, you are able to call upon him. He will hear you and his name is our tower. He will hear you and answer all our prayers. So when we make God our refuge, we have security. So in the times when we are alone, because this time has been just, you know, people don't move around. They don't even visit one another because of COVID-19. You are safe in the hands of the Lord. You make him your refuge. Even in case you had not become intimate with God, this is the time to be intimate with him so that you, are, you make him your refuge. When he's our refuge, that is our security. Uh, in Psalms 46, verse 1 and 3, I want us to read that verse. Uh, it will encourage us when we are in the, when God is our refuge. The Bible says, God is our refuge and strength mighty and impenetrable to temptation, a very present and well-proved help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, and though the mountains be shaken into the midst of the seas, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling and tumult. Selah. Praise the Lord. I love the word of the Lord. When we have connected with him, he is our refuge. And David said, he is our refuge, he is our strength. In these times of adversity, in these times of trouble, God is our refuge, he is our strength. He gives us strength when we are completely, you know, beaten, beaten and we are down. We have nowhere to go to. So we have known his name is our tower. And he says, we will not fear. When God is our refuge, we will not fear what is going to happen because we are safe in his hands. David said, it is a very powerful scripture because he says, even if the mountains will come and go to the sea, he said, we will not fear. That is a very powerful trust in the Lord. So I will encourage you in the name of the Lord, in these times, trust in God because he is faithful, he keeps his word. He doesn't uh, relent. He doesn't uh, become, you know, unfaithful in any way. He is able forevermore. I thank God because, you know, when we trust in him, he is able to do things that we are not able and the things that man cannot do. No wonder David said, vain is the help of man. And Jesus Christ himself also said, he cannot give himself to man because he knew what was in man. Let us trust in the Lord because he is a big, is a powerful refuge. He will help us. He will hold us in these times. He will help us. And as we dwell in his presence, uh, uh, the Bible says in Psalm 16 verse 11, it says, God, uh, you know, in the presence of God, there is joy, there is pleasure, and there is life forevermore. Joy means... You have joy even if there is war, even if there is problems. And in the book of Nehemiah, the, um, Nehemiah said, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Praise God. So in this time, as you connect with God, as you make him your refuge, as you trust in him, you know he is your strength because he is our joy. I want us to look at Psalms 91 to see a few verses in that uh, chapter also, you know. Uh, verse 1 of Psalms 91. Verse 1 of Psalms 91. The Bible says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide, uh, remain stable, and fix under the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no foe can withstand. Again, in connection with God, when we are connected to Him as we trust Him, He is our refuge and our stronghold. 
And when it's our refuge, it's a very powerful place to be because no enemy will come nearby. Praise the Lord. God is our protector and he's our refuge. And as we see, it says, we will remain stable in him. So in these times, what we are saying is connect with God. Connect with him because his place is a stable place. More than anyway, it's the safest place on earth to be is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. So we will remain stable in him. We will stand. He will help us in these times. And in verse 4, it says, He will cover you with his pinions, feathers, and under his wings shall you trust and find refuge. Praise God. When we are under his cover, he will cover us like a hand covers the cheeks. You, you have seen the hand, the way it covers the cheeks. When we are in God, he covers us. He, we are under him. We are under his wings, which is our refuge. And, and the Bible says, and his faithfulness is our, shield, is our shield. God is faithful forever. When we are under his wings, he is faithful. And his faithfulness will be our shield. It will, it will protect us in time of when there are arrows coming, in any kind of arrows that we are shot at us. That faithfulness of God is our shield because we trust him, he will act for us. He's a present help in time of need. Praise the Lord. So we need to trust him. He is our shield, he is our buckler. In verse 9 and 10 it says, Because you have made the Lord your refuge, that is still Psalm 91, and the Most High, your dwelling place. He says, there shall no evil befall you, nor any plague or calamity come near your tent. Praise God. Praise the name of Jesus. I want you to thank God for who he is to us. He says, when, because we have made him our refuge, the Most High God, we have made him our dwelling place. John chapter 15 verse 4 a says, Abide in the Lord and he will abide in you. Praise God. When we abide in him and he abides in us, the Bible says in verse 10, There shall no evil befall you, nor any plague or calamity come near your tent. Let me give you a testimony. In 1984, when people were, you know, there was uh, HIV and HIV AIDS just came. It uh, just began, uh, the issue of HIV and AIDS. And it was so scaring because they kept talking on the TV, on the news about this, uh, this HIV thing, and they had not known how it was affecting people. So I, I got afraid because my children were small. And I said, if this thing is going to have, it is going to wipe us. And I was sincerely, as a mother, I was so afraid of my children. And you know, they talk, I said, no, if it is in Matatu, if it is in the school, if it is everywhere, we shall all perish. Let me tell you, in that place of fear, the Lord spoke to me almost audibly about in this verse. It says, Psalms 91 verse 10. It says, there shall, when we dwell in the Lord our God, when we make him our refuge, when we abide in him, it says, no evil befall you, nor any plague or calamity come near your tent. Praise God. We are now battling about the COVID and, 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 and this, you know, corona thing. The Bible says, no evil, no plague, no calamity. The Lord spoke to me those words. And it gave me a lot of peace. When we are in God, when God speaks, there is peace. I had a lot of peace and I forgot about HIV and AIDS. And that I knew our children were safe and we were safe. Praise God. It's good to trust in the Lord. It's good to connect in him. Our safety is in the Lord. Wherever you are, ladies, whatever you are involved in, God is your refuge, is your safety. Verse 14 says, Because he has set his love upon me, says the Lord, 
Therefore, will I deliver him. Praise the name of Jesus. I love it connects so well with your theme, divine connection. Because you have set, you know, you are love upon God. It says, uh, therefore, will I deliver him. He will deliver us from all these things that are happening. He will deliver us because he's our refuge. And he means what he says. He doesn't lie. The Bible says God does not lie. He's not a man that he should lie. He, we trust him, we believe in him, and we shall live. Praise God. So he says, I will set him on high. The Lord is going to afford us with his right hand because he knows and understands my name. Because we know his name is a tower. Praise the Lord. His name is a tower where the righteous run into in time of trouble. So he says, because he knows and understands my name, has a personal knowledge. You have given your life to the Lord. You have a personal knowledge with him. You are his child. So God says he will deliver us. He will deliver you and he will hold you high. Praise God, because we know his name. We've connected with him. And he says, and I knowledge and mercy. When we know his no, when we know him and mercy and love and kindness and trust and relies on me. That's what God says. When we love, when we trust and rely on him, he says, I will never forsake him. Praise the Lord. God will never forsake us. That's why he says in Hebrews 5 verse B, I mean uh, Hebrews 13 verse 5b. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. There is nowhere safe in on earth except in the Lord Jesus Christ. Ladies, if you have not been, if you have been in the middle, just trust in the Lord. Put all your life to him. You are in safe hands. So he will never leave you. He will never leave us nor forsake us. Verse 15 says, because of that, when he calls upon me, I will answer him. You know, when you have connected with him, God will answer all our prayers. Bible says, when you call upon me, I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you have not known. Let us also learn to call upon the name of the Lord in the place of prayer. Many times we think God understands and we are thinking we are having so many problems and we say God understands. And God sees. Yes, he sees, he understands. But he has told us, ask and it shall be given you. Knock and it shall be opened. And he said in John chapter 16, verse 24, up to now, you have not asked anything in my name. Ask and it shall be done to you that your joy may be full. Praise the Lord. So we need to arise and ask God. Do not say God understands. Do not sit there and just leave yourself. He understands. You remember the blind Bartimaeus? The Bible says, when he called and said, Son of David, have mercy on me. The Bible says, Jesus stood still. He stood still and he did not do anything. And then he asked him, what do you want me to do for you? He said, that I may receive my sight. You see, God wants us to ask so that we can be a partaker in the miracle that he's going to perform. And I think that's why it says the name of Jesus is a tower where we run to and call upon his name and then he will deliver us. Let me tell you a story. One time, uh, our son, our fourthborn child, he was, he fell sick at night very sick. He ran out of breath and we rushed to the hospital. He was admitted for three days and there was nothing. They could not find anything. They took all the tests. They could not find anything. We came back home. The day we came back home, he fell sick again. The same problem. This time round, we say we are not going to the hospital. We called upon God. The name of Jesus is a tower where the righteous run into in time of trouble and they are safe. We called upon the name of the Lord. He was healed instantly. And that thing disappeared. Ladies, 
whatever is happening to you now in your homes, call upon the name of the Lord. He is there for us. He hears prayer, he answers prayer, and he feels it. The Bible says in, uh, I think Hebrews 4.15, it says, the priest, he is a priest who is touched by the feelings of our infirmities. Yeah, whatever we are going through, he is touched by those things. But he wants us to call him. He wants us to involve him so that, uh, you, you know, you become a partaker in what he's doing. So that's why he said, he will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. Praise the Lord. He will be with us in trouble. And he will deliver us and honor us. When we honor him by submitting our lives to him, when we submit to the authority of God and we lean on him, the Bible says he will honor us. He says, I will honor those who honor me. Praise God. So when we call upon him, we, we commit all unto him. When we are connected to him, he will take care of us. And then in the book of Jude uh, 1 verse 1, it says, Who are those who are called and chosen? Dearly beloved of God, the Father, and separated those who are set apart and kept for Jesus Christ. Praise God. Every one of us who have known Jesus Christ as our Savior, we are kept for Jesus Christ. We are kept for him, for his coming, for his use. Praise God. When I looked at that word, you know, I was searching. You know, I googled and all that. Eh? The word kept for Jesus Christ, what it meant. In the, in the dictionary, it doesn't mean much. But I, 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 I searched and it says... Kept for Jesus Christ. It says you will be attended to. Attended to carefully. You are attended to carefully. You are taken care of. You are guarded. You are kept well. You, you know, to observe. You are observed. You are, you are protected. You, somebody is caring for you and concerned for you. And you are reserved. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Let us connect to this God because we shall be preserved. Because that is what God, we shall be preserved from evil. Paul also said, God will preserve me from evil and he will keep me to the end. I love that. We have connected to God to live a life of Christianity, to live a life of Christ until he comes. And when he comes, we go with him and live with him forever. So our relationship to God is very, very crucial, even at this time. Very crucial because he is ready to help us. He is ready to, to, to come for our rescue. He is ready to hear us. Uh, I, I was just thinking the other day, I said, you know, when, we, when quarantine, the lockdown was announced, I said, if there was a time that we can be close to God and call upon him and hear him more, it is this time. Because we don't go for meetings, we don't mix with the others, can we spend time with God? Can we seek his face? The Bible says, if you seek me, you will find me. He said, if you draw close to me, you will draw close to me, uh, draw close to us. He will draw close to us. And when God is close to us, there is that sensitivity that he gives us in our lives, in our homes. Ladies, we shall be able to, to sense many things and we shall be able to prevent many things because we have known who we are in the Lord. Praise his holy name. So we, we are kept we are taken care of by the Lord. We are guarded. The protection of God is upon us. And we are, you know, we are reserved. We are preserved for God. So we are very special before him. We are a chosen generation. We are a, a royal priesthood, a mighty people of God. So you need to know who you are 
so that you don't mourn over your problems at this time, so that you don't pity yourself, so that you don't cry and, 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 and wanting people to come and pity you and to pamper you because you are a special person. Praise God, ladies. You are very special. Can you arise from that pity party? Can you arise from looking down upon yourself? Can you arise in that place of not being able to pray? The Bible says prayerlessness is sin. Arise and pray. Arise and connect to God more. Arise and draw close to God. And he will draw close to you. And he will help you. Will, you will help the family. You know, mothers, you are the center of the family. Whatever you are, the family will be. Can you connect to God? Can you, can you become intimate with God? Because God cares and is concerned. Can you be close to him? Because he will understand your problems. He will understand the family. He will help us in every way. And first and foremost, he's our protector. Praise God. So I will urge you in the name of the Lord to abide in him. And he will abide in you and be faithful to God in these times. Be, let us be faithful. It doesn't matter how things are. Let us be faithful. Do not be corrupt in any way. Do not look for corrupt ways and corrupt means. Be faithful to God and stand. Be counted among those who are standing because God is, is, his eyes are upon us. You know, in the Bible, the Bible says uh, in 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro the whole earth to show himself strong in behalf of those whose hearts are blameless toward him. Praise God. Wherever you are, the eyes of the Lord are upon you. And it says, his eyes are running to and fro the earth. Looking for those people who have connected with him and are living right with him so that he can prove himself strong on their behalf. Whatever problem it is, if it is sickness, God is our healer. If it is luck, God is our provider. You call upon him and he will provide. Praise God. He is not limited. He's not limited by time or space. And the Bible says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And when you are his, he is your father. And a father will provide for his children. So all you need to is say, Father, I need this, I need this. And it is not, you, you don't have to think of how God will. When Elijah, when there was famine, the Lord commanded the raven. God will command. God will command the raven, as he did during the times of Elijah. When the raven, when the food, wherever the raven was bringing from, God finished, he was directed to the widow, and God commanded the widow to feed him. Let me tell you, ladies, when we are faithful to God, when we trust him, it doesn't matter how things look like, he will come and help us. The Bible says God told Isaac in the times of drought, when nothing was, uh, can grow, he said, plant. And the Bible says, he listened to God and he planted. The Bible says he harvested a hundredfold. What is impossible to God? In these times of trouble, let's trust him. There is nothing impossible with him. The Bible says nothing is impossible to them that believe God. When he came to Mary, the Bible says, when, he, you know, when he, she asked questions, she was told there is nothing impossible to God. So, ladies, let me encourage you in the name of the Lord, in these days we are living in, that we may trust God. Days are bad, and I can imagine it might be even worse the following year. But when we anger on the Lord, when we put, let our roots go in the Lord, we shall not be shaken. He will be there for us. He will be there for our children. He will be there even for the church and for the nation. Let us trust God. Mothers are the people who know how to pray. Can we, be, can we trust God? Can we make him our refuge? 
Can we make him our stronghold? Can we make him our place of stay so that he can help us? Let me encourage you. Be faithful in these days and trust God who is our refuge. You can go and read that uh, Psalm 91. It's a very powerful Psalm because as you dwell in the secret place of the most high God, you are abiding under his shadow and nothing, nothing will harm us. Nothing. Unless God has allowed, he allows it for a purpose. But nothing, we are safe in his arms. So I thank you for, for this time. I urge you, I encourage you to rest in him and trust him. Thank you so much for such a time. And I trust those people uh, at home, give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and give everything to him. He will help us. Thank you. God bless you. Wow, that is so powerful. I think I need a minute to, to digest. <laughs> but we will have, have time to, to reflect and digest on God's word. You know, in the presence of the Lord, Reverend has told us, is the safest place. So thank you so much, Reverend Rebecca Tuimising, for allowing the Lord to use you so powerfully to, to speak to us. I am sure, ladies, now, you are no longer the same. You are encouraged just like I am, that when I call upon him, the Lord is my stronghold and I am safe in him. So we will not fear, but trust upon the Lord. And as we continue worshiping the Lord, we have heard his word, we have been blessed and refreshed. We also want to worship him through our giving because giving is part of our worship. We only give back to the Lord what he has given us because we and whatever we have belong to him. And so I want to invite us now to give to the Lord using our church pay bill number 809109, but not this. The account number is Ladies Fellowship for today. So the pay bill number is 809109. The account number is Ladies Fellowship. So let us give unto the Lord. Meanwhile, we can be listening to a song from the Mabalozi Choir. So let us give unto the Lord.
In response to the word of God, I'm sure when Reverend spoke, the Lord has spoken to you. You, 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 you have been refreshed. But also, I'm sure that the Lord is telling you something, that you need to surrender to him. You, you need to give it unto the Lord. So I want to invite you, wherever you are now, as we call upon the Lord, just to surrender. What the Lord has spoken to you about, speak it to him. And we'll invite our Reverend to pray with us as we, we pour ourselves to the Lord, as we tell him how we want him to work with us in accordance to his word, just like he has spoken to us. So welcome again, Reverend, to lead us in prayer. Amen. Praise the Lord. I believe as we heard the word of God, God has been touching our hearts and ministering to us. And you know where you need him most, according to the message. I want you to surrender to him. I want you to let go. If you have been living in fear, if you have been worried about what will happen, I want you to let go because God cares and he's concerned about us and he loves us so much. Shall we pray? <clears throat> I want you to raise your hands if you need this prayer, wherever you are, wherever you are, God sees because he's not limited by time or space. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you and we bless your great name. We have read in your word that the name of Jesus is a tower where the righteous run into in time of trouble and they are safe. Father, we come to you now concerning this verse. We lift up ourselves unto you. You have seen us, Lord, you've, as we've heard your word, where we have run short, where we need you most. Father, look at those hands that are raised, O oh God, May you touch each one of them. May you minister to them. May you strengthen them. May you lift them up in from that discouragement in the name of Jesus. Father, may you give them the peace of God which passes all understanding. May you touch their hearts. May you change them now. May you, Lord God Almighty, lift them to new levels. May you encourage your people. Father, help every one of them, even in their families, God. Let these women be strengthened. Let these women, Lord, make you as your refuge and your strong, their stronghold so that, God, you can cover them as a chicken, as a chicken covers, a hen covers its cheeks. Father, bless these ladies 
every one of them and minister to them. Reach them uh, to their families, oh God. Meet them all at the point of their needs. Thank you for hearing our prayers and answering because you have told us to ask and you will answer. And you have said you are able to do exceeding abundantly above that which we ask or think. So, Father, thank you because you will do it for the glory and honor of your name. Bless them abundantly. Bless the pastor of the ladies. Bless this church and all the, the, the leadership of the church. Even in these times, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen and amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's powerful. Powerful prayer. We, we are children of God, and indeed, he has listened to us, and we are sure that he is going to hit, he is going to bless us, he is going to lift us. Ladies, I want to appreciate you so much for setting this time apart, this beautiful afternoon, to be in the presence of the Lord. I am sure we have been blessed, we have been encouraged, and, and, and I just want to, to, to now pray as we bring this uh, meeting into a close. Let us pray together. Dear Lord, we thank you. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for lifting us. Thank you for our Reverend Rebecca. Thank you that she could come and minister to us. We pray for a special blessing upon her and upon her family, upon the servant of God, her husband William. Bless them and continue lifting them in your word, in your ministry, in their family, and bless every lady who took time to listen. May you continue ministering unto us. Thank you for your presence. We have indeed been with you. We have experienced the warmth of your fellowship. Thank you for being with us. For the rest of the afternoon, we invite you that you're going to continue ministering unto us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so, from us, we want to wish you a very good afternoon for the rest of the Saturday. May the Lord continue blessing you and watching over us. We pray that the Lord will give us many, many other times that we can fellowship like this. Indeed, it has been a blessing. And now I want us to share in the words of grace together. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen and amen. God bless you.